Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Geminati, Regional VP of Sales here at Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into our bank statement program, which is the most popular program here at Angel Oak. And I will introduce our two subject matter experts here in about another minute. We'll let everyone log in. Uh, just uh, so everyone know, I hope, you know, happy March Madness, right? It starts today. So, uh, you know, I'm just give us one hour of your time and then you can go watch the game. So, but, uh, uh, but um, hopefully everyone's having a great March and uh, everyone's seeing a pickup in activity because I know we all are. Uh, and uh, hopefully what that means is going to be, you know, a, a pretty strong 2024 here. So um, give it about another minute or so. Still have some people logging in. All right. This is going to be recorded. This will be sent out before noon tomorrow. So everything we're going to do today is on our website. So this this isn't a PowerPoint presentation. Everything's uh, going to be from angeloakms.com and really easy to navigate and use. We're going to cover uh, a deep dive into our bank statements. We're going to tell you, we're going to share with you some highlights of it, some recent changes. Uh, we're going to talk about what we like to see and what we don't like to see on the 1003. Talk about some trade lines for credit, and then we're going to go into our pricing engine, and uh, really, then we'll go into our marketing portal and show you guys and girls on how to market to these types of borrowers. So, give it about another 10 seconds. All right, let's get started here. Again, my name is John Geminard, Regional Vice President of Sales here at Angel of Mortgage Solutions. Uh, I'd like to introduce our two great subject matter experts. Uh, Lisa Lee, please introduce yourself. I'm Lisa Lee. I'm out here in Utah. Uh, I've been with Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions for coming up on seven years. So uh, love non-QM and obviously working with the OGs here at, at Angel Oak. We, you know, it's been the, the funnest time, but um, I'm looking forward to working with you guys today and talking about our bank statement program. We have, through trial and error, pains and successes, learned how to do these right. And so you know, hopefully we can um, give you some good pieces of tips and pieces of advice today. So thank you for having and, me. And then uh, out of our Miami office, Javi Naranjo, please introduce yourself, Javi. Hey, John, thank you. Um, my name is Javi Naranjo. I am an inside sales account executive. So um, if you're in Wyoming, if you're in Nebraska, if you're in all those uh, other states that aren't as big, I'm there for you and I'm, I'm your guy. So. Um, yeah, I can't wait to talk about Bank Statement Program. It is by far one of the best uh, programs out there. Um, will increase your volume probably double, triple if you really go after it. Um, so I can't wait to really dive into it and tell you guys about it. I like that, Javi. Challenging people on March Madness Day. I love it. Yeah, and yeah. you're right. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, you really, if you really focus on that self-employed borrower, you know, it's, there's a lot of business to be had out there. And I'll throw some stats out there once we get started here. But, um, but before we get into the highlights of the bank statement program, let's do a quick poll. Who on this call has originated and closed a bank statement, uh, a bank statement loan in the last 12 months? So, well, while people are participating in the poll, just since 2020, so obviously COVID four years ago, almost to the day, uh, over 20 million, 20 million new business applications have been formed since 2020. So think about that opportunity to go after, as Javi mentioned, to go after those type of borrowers. So let's see what our poll results are. Wow, 71% have not originated a non-QM, uh, I'm sorry, a bank statement loan in the last 12 wow. months, wow. So guys, this is what we're gonna spend the next 55 minutes talking about, how one, get you better at learning about bank statements, two, show you where all the resources are to find these borrowers. And like I mentioned, 20 million new business applications have been formed since 2020. So uh, so let's, let's jump into it right now. So um, where's my agenda here? All right, Lisa yeah. Lee, you're going to cover highlights of the of the program. Sorry about that. I lost my I lost my way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Bank Statement Elite program it was really created uh, to be more aggressive as far as pricing is concerned. It's a little bit more of a strict product, 
And uh, we'll show you in a while about the quick quote tool and it will give you this option. But right now, basically you're gonna look at this program for those real stellar borrowers that there, you know, no challenges with these guys and uh, the, for pricing benefit. Um, I've been pricing a few out today and yesterday, and it looks like anything from 85 and above, you're going to probably go with this bank statement elite program because it's significantly better in price. Um, but you know, our core bank statement, it offers both when you do the quick quote tool. So uh, benefits of this program, it goes up to 3.5 million without exception uh, on the loan sizes, 12 or 24 months bank statements allowed. Uh, the difference here, foreclosure, short sale, deed in lieu of bank, bankruptcy, any of the large credit events that happen are required to have 48 months of seasoning versus uh, 24 months on our core product. 30-year uh, fixed rates, of course. It's a two-year bank, uh, two-year self-employment is required on this program. Uh, they can be, they have to be at least 50% owner to go business bank statements. And then on our personal is 25% owner. Uh, this is allowed, of course, on purchase, cash out, rate and term, owner ox, non-owner ox, and uh, second homes. It does offer a 40-year interest only, up to 80% loan to value. Our core product goes to 85, so there's a difference there. Uh, here, so we start the expense factor on this, on all of our bank statement loans. We automatically approve the bank statements, which we'll talk deeper later, at 50% expense ratio, assuming 100% ownership, unless you tell us otherwise prior to the review, right? So there can be adjustments made. That's our starting point. And then, of course, depending on the type of business you have, we will get into, you know, adjusting the expense ratio with a third-party letter and or if it's a, if it's a, a, a a business that requires a higher expense ratio, such as a car lot or restaurant, then we may assess a, a you know a, a higher expense ratio. So again, this does go down to a 660 minimum FICO up to 75, and allows you to go to 90 LTV with a 720 score. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Lisa. And and so, Javi, talk. Uh, let's go over and, and just cover that really. Just uh, uh, Lisa touched on a little bit. Touch on just you know what we call you know, internally we call it our regular or core uh, bank statement. And really what the differences are between bank statement elite and then the, the core bank statement program, please. Yeah, so um, the bank statement elite is a great program, um, but it, like, like she said, um, it's a little bit more aggressive in pricing and not everybody will fit in their bucket. So our core bank statement is for, the, it's a broader range of borrower that will qualify. Um, as you see, our FICO goes down to 640. Um, the skeleton will be the same. We do 12 or 24 months of business or personal bank statements, um, up to 3 million, um, down to 150, right? But the few differences that we do have is, for example, um, we've always required two years self-employment on bank statements for our elite program. We now just announced that we have a one year self-employment allowed on our bank statement program for regular. Um, that is business bank statements only, but this is a great program for borrowers that um, maybe, you know, they're a chef, they've had, they've been working at a restaurant for a long time. They say, I could do this on my own. I can make my own money. You know, they come out with their own restaurant, they're killing it, and they've been at it for about 13 months, you know, and why not give them a loan based on their bank statements? We do that for them. So it's really good um, kind of uh, program to use that we didn't have before, and you could really take advantage of it. Um, another big difference between the elite and core is really going to be kind of the credit and the seasoning requirements, right? Um, so in terms of bankruptcy, um, we will be looser on the restriction where we go 24 months from the discharge date on 7 and 11, right? And then for Chapter 13, we actually go 24 months from the filing date, right? So they got discharged yesterday, and then 24 months ago, they filed. They qualify if that's all they've got, if that's the problem. Now, of course, every, they do need to qualify with the rest, and, and we'll touch up on credit later, but, um, you know, this program is really meant for a broader range of borrowers. Um, this is to qualify um, self-employed borrowers that are really looking to use their bank statements because their tax returns are just in the trash can. To be, to be nice, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to be nice. Um, we, they're great borrowers. It's just their tax returns, you know. They got to run their business the way they got to run it, and we give them this outlet. Um, and so, um, you know, it's more flexible. We want your bars to qualify. Also, on residential pay history, you also see looser restrictions there also. We allow one 30-day late payment 
in 12 months, which in elite, we don't allow any. So, um, and along with that, we allow rent free now, which is also a big thing. Yeah, thanks, Harvey, for bringing that up. That was one of the notes I made to myself to make sure we've talked about some of those enhancements. And, and you touched on them both, you know, the one year self employed bar and you perfect example of that you gave. And then uh, the rent free bar, or let's face it, since COVID, a lot of a lot of people have, you know, changed their living styles, right? And, you know, whether they move back yeah. in with family or friends or whatever. Uh, so, you know, now they're saving up to, 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 to purchase that home. So Lisa, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about the 1003 and, 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 and really this is how and why we get a lot of exceptions because 30% of the loans we close at Angel Oak don't meet our guidelines. And it's because you and Javi do a great job of getting complete 1003. So talk about what you like to see on the 1003. You know, the biggest thing, obviously, we do need to know about their residence history. We need to see if they've been a renter or if they've owned a home in the past, you know, at least two years uh, of their residence history, just so that we can make sure that we ask for the right, you know, conditions and look for the right things up front. Um, and then we, you know, as far as the employment goes, it's really important that it matches up with the bank statements that you're submitting to us so that it makes sense for our mm -hmm. team when they're looking at the bank statements to review. So if it's, you know, Henry's Auto Shop, we want to be able to see that Henry's Auto Body Shop is the, is yeah. the uh, you know, statement that we're looking at to make sense for our guys. So we want that really tight. But one really, really important thing to understand is we do not want and get in a habit of no income on the 1003. A lot of people will have already sent this somewhere else and it didn't qualify and fell out possibly because it didn't qualify conforming, they'll forget to remove that income. Very important to remove the income. We all, I think, suggest to our brokers to just take the income off the 1003 altogether to submit it that way. We cannot unsee income if it's stated on a 1003 or an application coming from the borrower. So please remove the 10 or the income and also don't submit any documents that have income stated on them, such as of course, no tax returns ever on a bank statement program and or any other form that has any income stated on it. You know, nothing, K-1s, no forms. So that's very important. Even the divorce decree, but divorce decree has- Divorce you know, decree is Right, so those, right. Are, those are great points, Lisa. Um, yeah, just, Leave the income to us because that's what we do and that's what we do best. So, yeah. Well, Javi, talk about like credit. What do you what do you look for? Because basically, Lisa and Javi and all of our great account executives across the country are basically doing a pre underwrite. You know, so yeah. they're going to look at the credit. Like Lisa said, she's going to look at the 1003, make sure everything matches there. But Javi, talk us about trade lines. And you mentioned earlier a one times thirty on the credit for residential pay history. So talk a little bit about credit, please. Sure. Yeah. And, and actually, before I go into it, I did want to say it's so important to have a 1003 fully filled out. You know, um, I, I remember hearing it once from uh, Melanie Poor, uh, one of our senior uh, underwriters and, and underwriting managers. Um, the 1003 tells the borrower's whole story, you know, yeah. like she knows exactly who she's underwriting for just by looking at a complete 1003. It says everything on there. And, you know, to go along with that, the credit report also you know, that gives her the other half. You know, there's one half of in the 1003 and the other half is on that credit report. On the credit report, we want to see just the regular uh, credit history on there. You know, we'll look at the bankruptcy on there. We'll look at the collection. But most importantly, your borrower needs to have three trade lines for 12 months or two trade lines for 24 months, right? And now along with that, we do allow, if, you're, if you have an active, if the borrower has an active credit card that's still open, right it may not have a balance on it but it's open and if they wanted to swipe it today they could that trade line is an active trade line and we would allow that yeah yeah thanks javi and, and it's really important that you know we're letting our audience here today know that and, and daniel's on this call and he just closed along with us and he's given us a shout out he said we were awesome so hopefully uh thank you daniel for your business so um so let's get into the q a just want a couple things this is being recorded. This recording will be sent out before noon tomorrow, depending upon where you are. Uh, and we will get this out. If we don't get to all your questions here today, you're, we will have your account executive reach out to you. So uh, appreciate. There was a question here about a prepayment penalty. We only have a prepayment penalty on investment properties, and it's a standard three-year prepayment penalty. So let's get into some other questions. 
Lisa, you talked about expense ratios. If you don't mind, dive a little deeper into that expense ratio for business-based statements. Yeah, for sure. So, of course, again, we started a 50% expense ratio. So what we do is we submit the statements over to our team. They will then send back to us what the net deposits, acceptable net deposits are that we can use. From there, you know, we're going to analyze what type of business this person has as far as um, if it's an e-commerce business or if they're, you know, they have a ton of employees and, you know, few, you know, we need to establish the whole thing. We get also what's called a uh, business questionnaire form, bank, bank statement business questionnaire uh, from the borrower and or from their CPA or tax preparer that tells us what their percentage of ownership is so we can start there and then determine, you know, expense factor wise where they're starting. If they qualify at 50%, you're great. We do still have to confirm their percentage of ownership, uh, you know, and so we need to get something for that as well and their time of self-employment. So we do have to verify those things. Uh, but if you need a lesser expense ratio or if the, if the uh, you know, if the business doesn't have such a huge expense, you can just simply have them add that expense ratio or that percentage to the same letter and or you know to that uh, to the form the business questionnaire form and then we will be able to use up to 85 percent of the income or meaning we can reduce that expense ratio all the way down to 15 percent so that will help you there yeah and Lisa, i think that's really important because you know you i always give the example and, and we close about nine nine percent almost 10% of the loans we close are for realtors. And realtors yeah. are a perfect example of getting a you know, 15% expense ratio for. So meaning, like you said, we can use 85% of those deposits on there. So uh, Javi, go into a little bit, I know we have it right up here on the screen, but go into a little bit of a breakdown of the LTV score requirements. You might have to look at your, your matrix because <laughs> things are always changing. So don't be, don't be, don't be afraid to look at the matrix. So uh, uh, give us kind of a breakdown of what those LTVs and score buckets are, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, of course. Um, so we can actually go up to 90% LTV, right, with a 720 FICO. And then we could go 85% with a 700, I believe, if I'm, if I'm correct, maybe even 680. Um, and then 75% um, for a 640, which Guys, in all honesty, I've seen a lot of borrowers turn down at the 640 um, just because the, the lender couldn't do it. So the fact that we're doing it at 75 is awesome. Um, a lot of these borrowers are prepared for it. So we go down to a 640, 75% on TV. Yeah, thanks, Javi. And I'll, I'll retract the comment. It was Wayne that has closed the loan with us, and not Daniel. So Daniel, hopefully you will send one to us. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but thank you, Wayne, for the shout out. Uh, and he said we were awesome. So thank you. So Lisa, talk a little bit about, you know, we talk about how many people have uh, have filed new business applications, right? Talk about, give, we have a couple examples. Sometimes the spouse is W-2'd, and then sometimes the actual borrower is, that has that W-2 gig and is, has their side hustle. So talk about how we look at that situation. You know, the great thing is about that is, you know, this, this is all about trying to increase their purchase power too and, and the ability to buy the home that they want to actually buy and qualify. So the great thing about this program is that so many people have um, started, you know, this have gig work or side hustles or whatever you say, and this is the best program for that. So it's worth asking that question to them because they probably go, oh, I'm not gonna bring that up because they write it off on taxes, whatever the case may be. But the truth is, is we can use W-2 income combined with the self-employed income. So whether the wage earner himself has a side gig, uh, as long as it's 30% uh, you know, of the total qualifying income, we can combine those incomes. We're only gonna do transcripts, and this is important to know, on just the W-2 piece of the income that's used. And so, um, but yeah, you, we can take a look at the bank statements for the self-employment piece of it, and then include the W-2. Another, also another nice thing is that we look at the primary wage earners uh, middle score on this program, and that's really helpful a lot of the times. We have to be able to verify that though, obviously to prove who is the wage earner. So if they're half and half owners of a business, it's not gonna work, but if one's w 2 and the other is self-employed, we take a look at whoever the wage earner is, so. Yeah, and, and we talked about it. You've mentioned it before, Lisa. And, and Javi, talk about who calculates the income for, you know, our customers. Yeah, 
So we do. Um, we save you guys all that stress. Don't, you know, no gray hair, trying to look line by line, you know, get your calculators out one by one. You know, oh, I messed up. I put the wrong number. No, don't do that. We have a team that'll do it for you. You get me the 1003, you get me the credit report and the bank statements, and I will have it calculated for you. I will go in there and underwrite the file, and I will take that stress off your hands. You know, that's that's your account executive's job. That's what we're the best at doing at Angel Oak. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for the great hair shout out there, Javi. So, thanks. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. so Lisa, another question we always get is, will you do a prequel on a TBD? Yes, all day long. And yep. it, it's the best benefit because you can actually confidently send your borrowers out to shop for a home because we, we're giving you the income that you can qualify them with. So it's a huge piece uh, to be able to run the bank statements first. We can review credit first. So we've got everything on it except for, you know, at that point, just the property. So then you can send them out to shop for the home that they're looking for. So, yeah. Yeah. And and, and many times, Javi, you know this and, and Lisa and all our account executives do, you're going to increase that buyer's purchasing power a minimum of two times. And I've seen as high as five times, you know. So uh, I, this is where I'll go into my public service announcement. If you know up front you are going to meet with a self-employed bar, you know, get their tax returns, try and go that route. But why not grab their um, grab their bank statements and have us calculate that income for you up front and then let that bar have a couple decisions versus Oh God, like 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 Lisa said, oh my, it's fallen out somewhere else. Now you're stretching. You know how many phone calls yeah. have you got, Javi or Lisa? That hey, you know this loan's been with you. No, it hasn't been with us. It just got to us because they couldn't qualify yeah. Yeah. for public tax returns. So uh, anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Hope I don't get hurt. Um, uh, Javi, talk about uh, talk a little bit about ten. Why would, uh, let's, we'll talk about 1099 here in a minute, but what would be a scenario why you would go 12 months versus 24 months? Yeah, very simply put, it's if your most recent 12 months are obviously a lot better and stronger than you had in, in your 24 months, you know, why are you going to put all that income together? You know, give me the strong 20, 12 months that you have right now, and we'll go ahead and move forward with that. And, and what I did want to say is even more so, if we're doing 12 months of personal statements, because maybe they're depositing a lot on their personal and they have the business, um, I'm, I'm not sure if Lisa touched up on it, but we can actually use 100% of what's in the personal if they have the, the three months of business. So even more so, if they're 12 months are strong, now we're using 100% of that income. Um, you know, I can't, you were, you were talking about, I can't count the amount of time someone's called me with the 1003 has, uh, a set purchase price and a set loan amount. And I go, hey, they qualify for a lot more than this. Um, and they're like, oh, well, that's awesome because they want our house, they couldn't afford it on tax returns. I'm gonna tell them and, you know, they move forward with the bigger house that the bar originally wanted. Well, Javi, and it gives them so many more options, right? You know, let's face it, they're brought in yeah. their, uh, their, their purchase power. So yeah, that's great. And thank you for calling Lisa out. She did not yeah. mention that. So. No, I did not. I'm so glad you did too, because I have it up right on my notes. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so um, Lisa, talk about let's. I'm going to click on this 1099 program. Let's talk about the 1099 a little bit here. You know, this is a great option. Again, you mentioned what nine percent of our people are are uh, loans we close are for realtors. They're a prime example of someone that would this could work really well for. The 1099 is in lieu of bank statements, and so um, you can. We just strictly take a look at the 1099 form itself. It does have to be issued mm -hmm. to the person themselves. And not a business or to, you know a small LLC, but we'll allow them to. We'll use 85% of that income. Uh, what they do is they take either one year or two years of the 1099 plus year-to-date earnings, and uh, you know and average that out. And so and give them 85% of that. It, it just makes it a lot cleaner. This is great for people who have very inconsistent deposits um, so that we don't have concerns about inconsistencies or large deposits here or there because we don't have to look at those. And so it's a really good time, especially now when it's the first of the new year to do this program. That's what I would say anyway. It's, it's yeah, a little uh, bit more difficult later in the year. I, I, I agree with you 100% there, Lisa, and it's great. And, and, and guys, that's what you, know, you could tell already by listening to Lisa and Javi and, and, and all of our other account executives, they, they are your go-to resource and they will do, they will do this all up front. And, and Javi, talk a little bit, you mentioned her name. I don't want to mention her name again because we'll have people calling her, uh, but 
talk, talk about, you know, getting an exception. We say 30% of the loans we close don't, you know, meet our guidelines. What's your process for getting an exception? And how does that follow the file through the entire process? Oh, we lost you. <laughs> did we lose? Okay, Lisa, did you get a question? I'll go. go ahead, Javi. Go ahead, Javi. We you yeah. cut out for a minute. Okay, do you guys hear me not good? All good? Yep. Awesome. Perfect. So what I was going to say is that the 1099 program is a great program, especially for realtors, right? So uh, sales tip, um, if you guys are doing a realtor presentation, you have a program for every single person in that room because every single person in that room is a 1099 um, employee and you can actually reach out to them and they could be your next borrower. So um, just a quick sales tip, you know, um, reach out to your realtors for that program. But um, yeah, about the quick quote, um, I do, um, uh, what we do at Angel Oak is a quick call, right? And the quick call is something that sets us apart from everyone else in that we will review this file and we will make sure that it's going to qualify. All of our account executives know our guidelines like the back of our hands, and I'm sure of that, that there's not one AE in our company that doesn't know them. And what we do is when we look at your 1003, when we look at your credit report, we're going to look at that before you go into underwriting. We're gonna, we don't want to waste your time. We don't want to waste the borrower's time. We want you guys to have an easy, an easy, smooth process in underwriting, right? And now let's say we're like, hey, this deal isn't working, but what we're going to do is we're going to get you an exception and we're going to reach out to our underwriter, right? And um, this, this, I believe, is going to answer that question, John. Um, we reach out to, um, her name is Melanie, and she's awesome, and she will look into your file and and <laughs> and she will make sure that um, this, this that we can do this loan, right? Um, if it makes sense and she uh, she likes this file, she's gonna make sure that it's gonna work. And you know, she has a team and, and the team, whether it's her or someone else, they're gonna look at it and they're gonna be like, hey, look, we wanna do this loan. We understand what they went through. We're gonna look at the, the whole scenario. You know, we're gonna tell them, hey, look, this borrower had something going on last year, you know, or three years ago and now, They've been on time with everything. They're earning that much more income. They're putting this much down. You know, we this is a really good file. And we'll make that exception before underwriting. You know, we don't want you to have to stress that midway through. I'll be pushing for some exceptions over there, man. Wow. Explained it perfectly. I mean, that's that's how we do it. We don't, you know, there's not an account executive here. And, and you know, I've been here 10 years. Lisa, how long did you say you've been here? Seven, seven, seven. on the third. Year. I've been four years almost. Yeah, almost. so like three I mean, years. they know how to, they know they know how to get things done, that, and that's what they do, and they get it done up front. So, because we really do, we we really respect your re re referrals, relationships, and we're not willing to put those on yeah. the line for just getting you a. A, a quick yes or a quick no. They're just we're we're gonna we're gonna pull that that file open and and pull it apart to make sure we can say yes and feel confident that that loan's going to close. Javi, I'm gonna stay with you here on one minute because you talked about trade lines. Uh, Marcellus asking regarding the trade lines require three tra trade lines for 12 months. What if they had three with 12 but they closed the account and it's no longer active? I know that was a recent. Oh, great question. Trade. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a great question. So if they close that within a year ago, right, that trade line is still considered to active, that we could use it, not active, but that is still a, an allowable trade line that we'll use. So if they have two active trade lines, right, inside of those 12 months and one, like you said, closed maybe last month, that's okay. We can still use it. Even if it was 10 months ago, we'll still allow it up to 12 months after it's closed. Yeah, thank you, Javi. Uh, Lisa, question, the difference between 12 and 24, and I know it's 12 months, right? The difference between 12 and 24 months. Is there a, is there a pricing difference? It depends on the LTV, really, um, and it depends on the situation. You know, pricing used to be a lot easier in the non-QM. It was pretty solid. Nowadays, it moves around just like agency and all the rest. But, you know, on the lower LTVs, you're likely not to see a price hit. It's usually an eighth difference here or there. But, um, you know, the biggest thing for us is, you know, and if you can get 24, it's great. We're going to tell you what works the best and, you know, and, and go with that. And you're usually not hit with much of a price hit, if any. So, yeah. Yeah, Javi, you might have to look at, you know, uh, we have Amelda is asking about um, non-permanent resident aliens on 
mm -hmm. uh, uh, on bank statements. Yeah, yeah. So we actually just started allowing these. I I love this because um, actually I have. I'm not sure if it's um, the Amelda I work with, but I do have an Amelda that was always reaching out to me about non-perm, and we do allow it uh, <laughs> for primary residents only, 80% LTV. Right, we do allow non-perm now, and this is this is recent, I believe. Um, but we allow for purchase and rate and term. And uh, there are some acceptable visa types, some we don't accept. So make sure you reach out to your AE to to make sure that they qualify. But we do allow non-perm now, which is awesome enhancement. Yeah. So yeah. So thanks, uh, uh, Amelda, and and if Javi's your uh, account executive, you're a lucky person. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, let's see some more questions coming in here. Um, uh, uh, da, 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 sorry, guys. Let me. Um, we talked about TBD, uh, cash out. We said maybe, and you might have to look at your matrix on this you know, because, you know, I think what did I? I think uh, since 2019, homes. The average home across America has appreciated 47%. So Lisa, talk about, you know, maybe cash out, you know, talk about how much cash in hand, maybe talk about loan amounts also. So the loan amounts, obviously we can go, you know, um, up to 3 million um, and 3.5 on the other. And the cash out amounts, obviously that differs a little bit. So we'll allow up to 500, cash out um, on most scenarios. Well, actually we've increased it to 1.5 million cash out if it's below 65 LTV. So, you know, this is always something that's, um, you know, up for exceptions and we will, you know, depending on what those LTVs are, what the profile of the person looks like, we can ask for an exception on these. And as John mentioned, 30% of our loans do you know, require an exception, even though we're so flexible. Um, and so, and that's one of those things, but we do, we're pretty flexible as far as the cash out is concerned too. So it's a good way to take a look at that um, option for sure. Yep. And then um, we're going to, we're going to get to price and we've mentioned pricing and, and, and you're going to see pricing maybe between elite and, and regular bank statements. Maybe today it's flipped, whatever, but a couple other uh, questions, Javi, about, uh, we talked about the expense factor and, and we always get another question coming in here because some, maybe someone's on a call or whatever. When do we need a CPA or a bookkeeper to approve an expense factor? Um, so simply put, it's when your deal really isn't working. Um, you know, when, when in that quick call process, like I said, everything is done up front, you know? Um, if our deal is, is, is fine at 50%, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, leave it there. It's fine. But, you know, if you're like, Javi, this, it doesn't make sense. I have a realtor, you know, they work from home. Um, they, they don't leave unless they're going to go show a house and they come back. Um, you know, you can get me a CPA letter. You know, if, if, you know, they have expenses that are low, the CPA needs to verify that. You know, you need to get me a CPA that says, hey, this is what their expenses are. If, if the CPA says their expenses are higher than, you know, I, then that's, a, that's an issue, you know, and, and that's what it is. But the CPA will need to confirm it. And we're going to need the CPA anyway, because the CPA needs to confirm that they own 100% of that business. So just reach out to that same CPA and say, hey, can you verify what their expenses are? Um, because they might have more income that we didn't know about. And the CPA will go ahead and verify that. All right. Yeah. And then uh, Dan, thanks for the shout out. You guys are the quickest to review those quick calls, quick, quick, quick calls. Whew. So Lisa, <laughs> what would you do? And, and Jane's asking a question here. It's a really good question. And this goes to the expertise that you guys have. Uh, talk about, you know, decline in income. And what would you do if you saw someone who had decline in income, maybe in the most recent 12 months versus 13 through 24? You know, so obviously at that point, we're just going to suggest to use the last 12 months. Uh, versus the last 24 months. There are scenarios too where we can consider the last six months of the 12. It just depends on the whole scenario. This has been a, a moving target really too. Um, we, you know, depending on the years and the success of the year before, we've seen this up and down, I think in the last few years, you would, guys would agree. And, uh, but, but as of late, we've seen some declining income in certain industries. And so we'll, that's why I say to send the 24 months if you can, 
that gives us the option to take a look at all of the income all the way around and then if we need to cut it to 12 months you know so just gives us more variety more to look at yeah and and, and then it's one less touch to the bar then the bar yeah. saying oh what are you asking me for this now get all 24 up front and, and always you know look at hobby and look at lisa and say they're like your confessional booth they're gonna they're going yeah. to yeah they're going to steer you in the right direction and they're going to tell you hey let's use all 24 or you know what like lisa just mentioned you know what their, their income's declining a little bit let's just stick with the 12 we'll get more purchasing power if we stick with the 12 and and move on and uh but i, I always say it doesn't cost you any more to have 24 months calculated versus 12 months calculated. Dude, so. I wanted to clarify, I believe it still will look up, look at up to 30% declining income, 30, 35. It really depends, right? But is it 25 is, mm -hmm. I don't know, that's usually the mark you stick with, but you know, we will look at some, def, you know, declining income. So if it gives us better income at 24 with a little bit of, in, you know, a decline there, we're still okay. So that's why I say, if you can pull more income 24 months, then we'll stick with that. But. Yeah, and like I said earlier, if you are meeting with a self-employed borrower, get their bank statements, all 24 of them, and then, you know, go get their tax returns. But I, I don't yeah. think I've ever seen a case where their buying power has gone up using tax returns versus bank statements. Yeah. So, you <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah. Could be, I could be crazy. I don't know. It's, it is March Madness. So um, yeah. anything else, guys? <laughs> It, anything else? I, I want to get you know, a lot of people have been asking about pricing. So, uh, okay, Javi, I'll ask you this question. How long, um, Amelda's asking this, and maybe she is your, uh, your uh, loan officer. Uh, how long does the process take to get a prequal? And then if you don't mind rolling into, you know, give us some turn times on, on files actually in house, please, Javi. Sure. Yeah. So it takes, it takes first from the beginning, it takes, 30 seconds to upload a quick call. Um, 30 seconds. Once once you get used to it, it's very fast. After those 30 seconds, I will get an email right away that you uploaded those bank statements to me. And in that minute that I receive that that email, I'm going ahead and sending it to my team to calculate that income. Okay. Um, that income, if I'm being honest, our official turn time I would say is 24 to 48 hours. But I see that thing coming in honestly in about inside of 24 hours most of the time. We're yeah. fast on those things. As soon as I get that income back, I'm working on your quick walk to get it out to you as soon as possible. So I would say, as, honestly, inside of a day and a half, most of our AEs are sending out those prequels for you as soon as they get that income. Of course, if there's something that comes up, you need an exception, you're missing some documents, um, that's going to hold us back maybe. But our official turn times, I would want to say on a quick walk should be two days um, after receiving income and all the docs. Um, now, if you get an exception, of course, it's going to take a little longer, but that would say the official time. After that, once you get that quick wall in your hands, if that buyer is ready to go. They have the contract. They're good to go. You can register, request disclosures, and lock that same day, right? It's that quick. Everything is we, – we, we don't want to make life hard for you guys. We want to make it as easy as possible. So you have your credentials. You log in. And I do want to say the quick wall process, you do not need credentials. Um, that is one of the best parts about it. You don't need yeah. credentials to price. You don't need credentials to upload. We're saving you that time. Um, from from quick call to closing, I would say 17 to 21 business days is a great time frame to close that deal. Yeah, Javi, and 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 I think you know you you know you saying what we have a team of experts that that's all they do is calculate that income for you. So and I've seen them coming back pretty quick, but I love. That you're you're you rather under promise and over deliver. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So so Lisa, I know people have talked about pricing. I'm gonna let you take me through our, our quick quote tool because Javi mentioned it. And um, let's take someone through, just run a scenario. You can get to it either way here, where the mouse is right now, or up here. But um, and and as Javi says, you don't need credentials to log in for this. So um, yeah, I'd and you can do it on your phone, by the way. Oh yeah, that's true. That's great to have for people, I think, on their phone, for sure. It's a huge benefit. 
So obviously ours is, I think, the most user-friendly out there. I mean, honestly, it's the drop downs are so quick. It's slick, it's live. The pricing is always live. It may be down for a minute or two to update things, but that's it. This is always live and updated to our underwriting guidelines as they are today. So anything you find here, the most important piece is like he's clicking on the bank statements, you're gonna find the income type. You wanna make sure that you put in the housing type if you know it, you wanna make yeah. sure you know, to mark all of these and hit all these drop downs, but they're, it's simple, it's so quick. If you wanna choose interest only there, you can do that too. And then below, as, I, as we were talking about, it's gonna give you the best price option first. And as you see here, our core bank statement program is the best price today, just an eighth off, but it's better. So yeah, that saves you a ton of worry, right? There's so, um, yeah. and it, you're not gonna run into a lot. And you'll see there the housing event seasoning, it gives you some quick stuff, um, but the pricing is better. So it's always better to go with core if you can, for sure. Yep. Then you'll, um, once you click on the view rates here, the view rate button is going to give you all of your options um, from par to buy downs and up. You can also choose for lender paid if you'd wanna see what that looks like. So here it looks like seven and a half is your closest to par. So you choose that rate, whatever rate you're looking at, you go down and you select your option. And once you do that, it's gonna take you right into, it's gonna prompt you to submit it for a quick qual. With, this is to go to your AE for a pre-qualification. You can choose to upload your 3.4 here, or you can skip this if you don't have that with you or you know availability, click next. And it's gonna take you right in to ask you a few quick questions, who your AE is, and then your company info. Um, of course, drop downs, everything is super slick and quick on this deal. Um, <laughs> and then once you get down here, uh, you'll just pull over your, this is your PDF, 1003 credit report, 1008, which no one knows what they are anymore, but it's transmittal summary with all the details. <laughs> um, and then you'll dump your bank statement. So 12 or 24 months, business or personal, you know, um, right here. It offers the questionnaire here, which this is our business, our bank statement questionnaire form that you send to your borrower to fill out or their CPA. Um, you can do it here, you can find it on our website, and of course the AE will send it to you as well with a quick call if you haven't done it at that point. So that helps us out though a lot. And once you get down here, just answer the quick uh, credit questions real fast and submit. Once you click the submit, as Javi said, it, it goes directly to your AE. It notifies us that it's in our inbox for quick calls so that we can get it over to our bank statement team and get it in line for review. So, yeah. so I mean, that's, I, mean I, I think that took less than a minute to go through that yeah. process. So uh, thank you, Lisa, I really appreciate it. And, sure. and, and it's really easy to use. And uh, I, I do want to clarify one thing though, even though you clicked on that par rate that we were talking about, I think it was seven and a half, uh, with a little bit of a credit, that's not locked in the loan. So no, you've got to lock the loan there at that point. You're just you're just getting this process started. So I just want to make sure everyone's yeah. aware of that. Any anything else to add here? What did I miss, Tommy? Lisa? No, you didn't miss anything. That was great. I mean, <laughs> guys, this is so easy. I don't I don't know how I don't know if everybody knows how easy this is. I mean, I, I after doing it for quite a while, me personally, I could do this in 30 seconds, but this is if it's your first time, it might take you two minutes the longest. Honestly, yeah. it's it's really user friendly. I love it. I, I would put this up against any any other pricer out there because yeah, of how easy it is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Javi, we're going to go into what I call one of the most underutilized uh, sections of our website. So, uh, I'm going to go back to the home page. You know, here, Javi, we do need login credentials, right? So, you would click on here. Correct. And I'm just going to pull this up. I'm going to log in. But I, I challenge, like the hobby challenged everyone earlier, you know, go out and market. I'm challenging everyone to use at least one of our marketing uh, platforms to, to market yourself. So go ahead, Hobby. Which one do you want to start with flyers? Um, actually, let's start from the, from, the, from the top to the bottom. Um, okay. I, I would prefer that. Um, yeah, we'll start with presentations. And and I do want to say, he, he said, if you're, marketing is so important nowadays. If you're not marketing, I, I don't know how you're getting business. It's so important to get your name out there, to reach out and let people know who you are. Um, you know, um, this is the first way that we have that we can help you out is realtor presentations. You know, I touched up on it before. 
um, if you're doing a, a presentation to realtors, um, they are your borrowers also. They could be if you reach out because they qualify for the bank statement program and the 1099 program. So this is a great tool to use to present to realtors, to have them show up and, and you know, you could give them a flyer with your name on it. We have a fully customizable flyer there for you. We also have a fully customizable presentation. Um, you know, the, um, Andres Bernal, who also works in Miami with me, he sends out these realtor presentations like nothing. And one of the benefits that me and him have talked about all the time is that we will do this presentation for you. It's awesome. Like, I, we enjoy this. I don't know if you guys um, realize, but me and Lisa, we like doing these webinars. We love presenting to you guys because we know these products like the back of our hands. So we'll talk about this for hours if we had to. Um, this is non-QM. It's what we know. So this realtor presentation will, it's, it's, we have a short one and a, and a, and a longer one, whatever, whatever suits you better. And we have page by page just explaining the benefits of non-QM to them in a realtor way where it even uses their terminology, you know, because we use borrower, they use client, you know, but we, we adjust in different ways for realtors. So it's a great tool to use. Yeah, Javi, you know, I'll use Amelda because she's asked a lot of great questions here today. If, if, if Javi's going in and presenting on your behalf to your realtor uh, clients, he's going to say, he's not going to say anything about Angel. It's all going to be, no. I am just Amelda's one investor. Amelda's got a lot of other investors she works with, but today we're just going to talk about non-QM and the programs and the products that Amelda has. Nothing about exactly. Hobby, nothing about Angel Oak. I, I, I don't know why more people don't take advantage of this, but uh, anyway, so we talked on that. I'll, I'll get off my soapbox yeah. again. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and then the next one, the next one, the next two that we have, I'll touch upon them more quickly because the flyers I think are the most important. We have whiteboard videos. Whiteboard videos are quick 30 second to a minute long, um, just breaking down all of our programs to just simple drawings. Um, that's how easy it is. And it just tells your borrowers or your realtors, hey, look, this is my program. And again, nowhere does it say Angel Oak. It's totally unbranded. So you can use this and just save it, copy it, and post it on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your uh, TikTok, whatever you want. These are great videos to use. And then um, next, we have our social media posts. Um, personally, I love social media. Um, if you have me on Instagram or LinkedIn, I love it. I love making posts. I love making flyers. And one of the benefits is, is that we made it for you, right? We made the post for you. You don't have to come up with it. You know, I personally like to sit there and create my own posts. But some of you guys don't have time to do that. Some of you just need something quick, something quick so that people know that realtors and borrowers, you know, they need to know what you have. So as you see, we even have the words for you. You don't have to speak. You don't have to create. You just copy, paste, post. It's that simple. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, and, you know, just do it. Like, and, and you do a great job hobby marketing, uh, so yeah. it goes to you. All right. And um, yeah, this is, and I don't know if, if, if you've never been in our marketing portal, guys, you're missing, you're, you're missing. I can't stress it enough. You're missing out on awesome tools to get your name out there. Yeah. Christy, you know, if you're not reaching out, they won't know who you are. Yeah. Uh, Javi, Christy Best does it. She says it best uh, that she says, you know, Angel Oak has invested a lot in, for you to use these, these marketing platforms and you really just got to use them. That's it. Just, just do it. You know. So, um, yeah. let's talk about the the flyers, hobby. Yeah. So the flyers. You know, um, flyers are probably. I I feel like you know they're even before my time. This is one of the oldest oldest trades in the in the in the marketing toolbox, but it is the best. I mean, if you're not using flyers, I don't know what you're doing. You know, you show up to a a, a realtor office, grab ten, fifteen of them you know be like hey look these are my flyers you know feel free um to you know hand them out to borrowers you hand them out to different realtors as you see we have one here for uh carmen alexander right yep. carmen has this has this flyer perfectly set up it has her name it has her her picture it has her nmls it has her disclosures everything on it and one of the best parts again no angel oak this is a prime lending product that you can use 
and you can advertise for yourself, right? Um, they don't need to know. I, you know, I work behind the scenes. You know, I'm like one of those stage hands that work behind the scenes to make a beautiful Broadway play. You don't need to know I'm there, but I'm there. You know, we're there to help you guys make the beautiful production, which is a non QM look. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the beautiful thing about it, and, and it's funny that Carmen's uh, information is here. Once she's filled it out for one form, it populates for all the other flyers that we have. So it's not like you have to go back mm -hmm. in and, and type it. Look, it, I just pulled up all the income. You know, it's, it's tax time, right? So you're going to see a CPA to file your taxes. Why not ask that CPA, you know, to send this to their entire database? Go figure, right? Yeah. You know, Lisa, anything else? I know you do a lot of realtor presentations. I know you, you help your customers out with flyers and, and social media posts. Anything else to add here, Lisa? No, I think we've hit it. I just think using it is the most important piece, you know, and, and know that everything that we promote as far as in the marketing is a, we actually underwrite these products. They are closable programs. So you know you can promote them but you can take these into anybody as far as other you know credit unions banks you can the, their loan officers you can advertise yeah. these players to financial um people cpas they're running into a million people right now and um i think it's great to just leave your name but like javi said get out there and let them know that you do non-qm because no one knows i mean it's just you know being that one to jump out we'll be we have your back so when you have questions <laughs> Call yeah. us and we'll answer the questions for you. Just get it out there and we'll we'll you know we'll be your back. So yeah. 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 don't be afraid. It's exactly it. Yeah. If you're working with an Angel Oak account executive, I, I like Lisa says, they have your back, they know their stuff. You can see just by Javi here today and Lisa here today, they know their stuff and they can help you market yourself and close more loans. And uh, throughout that stat in the beginning since 2020, it's 20 million people have formed new businesses. So why not get out there? You know, there's a stat out there, I think, that says there's more self-employed borrowers than there are VA borrowers. So when you look at that pool and how big it is, and now that you have a one-year self-employed program available to them, as Javi mentioned, that's a great, that's a great, great find. You know, you uh, yeah. got to use the example. You have a, a doctor who's still doing rounds at a hospital but opens up their own practice and only did it 12 months ago. That borrower qualifies for a self-employed bank statement program. Bingo. Yeah. So. I just wanted to mention, so one real quick, I'm sorry, John, I know you're going to close no, it up, no. but I, I did have a chance to go out with a loan officer in, in one of the territories and um, she just wanted to do some marketing. So I said, well, let's just hit every, uh, you know, we made some self-employed flyers and some different things and we went into uh, her tax person, her CA, CPA, but we went into, we hit a strip mall, literally, these are all small businesses, and I, she just dropped off um, the self-employed flyers to these business owners with her card, and she's had like three calls from people just asking from one little day of marketing, and we just literally walked into just any random shop, you know what I mean, because they're all self-employed people, like a nail salon, and a, I think we went, in, we went into a small restaurant, anyway, it was great, it was so much fun, broke it up, <laughs> I mean, and everyone's self-employed, you know, you can do a million people. So. It's like Eric Morganson says it all the time. He goes, how do you find a, not, uh, how do you find a self-employed bar? Open your front door right. from your house and you will trip over them. So yeah. I love, I love the way you said that. <laughs> so, so Lisa, uh, Javi, I'll go to you first. Anything else in closing, marketing, anything else you want to share? Um, the only thing I want to say is reach out to your account executives. If you don't know who they are, I'm sure John will get on them and tell them, hey, you need to reach out. But nonetheless, they've probably already reached out. Search into your email box. I'm sure your Angel of Account Executive has reached out before. Um, ask them whatever questions you have. They know as much as Lisa and I. Guys, we are the best at what we do. I am a little biased, but I'm, I, I'm sure of it. You know, we, we, know our, we know our programs like the back of our hands. So reach out to us and we will help you out. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and to that point, you know, Javi, uh, Amelda's asking here, do we have any Spanish flyers? We're working on that, Amelda. I promise you that's a high priority here at Angel Oak. So uh, we're working on that. So, so Lisa, anything else in closing? No, just looking forward to partnering with you guys. It's Everything's coming back. The vibe feels better already, um, you know, and I think it's a, a really exciting time to get ahead of it and start promoting these type of products and, you know, to get, 
to get ahead of it. It's going to be a fun year and we look forward to working with all of you uh, to, to make a lot of money this year. So and get make a lot of people happy in homes. So. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. And then again, just uh, in closing, this is being recorded. We will get this out to you before end of uh, end of date tomorrow. And uh, I did share my contact information, hopefully with everyone here in the chat. So uh, if you don't have an AE, reach out to me. I know Moses has been doing some work behind the scenes here, like that stagehand, like you said, Javi. He's keeping us <laughs> keeping us all honest. Thanks, Mo. And then, uh, uh, but I, I shared my contact information. Please reach out. Uh, for those of you that have closed loans with us, and I appreciate the, the shout outs here, thank you for your business. For those who have not, you know, please give us a shot. And uh, uh, like Lisa said, we're feeling a lot of positive momentum right now, and why not take advantage of it and, and create your own business? So uh, on behalf of everyone here at Angel of Mortgage Solutions, thank you. Have a great rest of your day and a great March Madness. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Avi. Hey, guys. Thank you.